Good afternoon, saints. Once again, I want to greet you in the precious name of the Lord's anointed, our Messiah, William Maran Brenham. Yeah, I just want you to remember me in prayers. Just had an attack in the flesh. Something that usually comes and goes, comes and goes. I have prayed to the Lord for this thing to go. But... Um, the Lord has always said his grace is sufficient for me. I know that God will always be with us until our mission is finished upon this earth. And I also know that the Lord will always have a means of making us humble so that no matter how much abundance of revelation we receive, that we may remain humble always knowing that it's by His grace that we survive. My wife has just prayed for me, and I know that I'm going to be well, for I know that she is part of the body of Christ, and the Spirit of God works through her. Once again, I greet you, and I say, let us continue with what the Lord has given us. All be well. There's nothing to worry. Uh, this flesh... It was born in sin, shaped in it, came to the world speaking lies. It's a pest house. It, it's not perfect, and it will never be perfect. It's not this body which God is really changing. What has been changed is the inner man. And around that inner man, the body will, will materialize a glorified body. Therefore, Lord, we are not. Therefore, we are not really worried about our fresh bodies. It's the soul that we are worried about. But even for now, we are no longer worried because we are already redeemed. We are sons and daughters of God. It's all. It's over now, saints. There's nothing to worry. There's nothing to worry. This has been vindicated by the vicarious return of Christ the second time into his church in these last days. The Alpha and Omega, the Almighty God, the triumphant Christ, has been revealed again in human flesh in our midst, vindicating that we have become one with the Lord our God. The Lord bless you so much. So now, this afternoon, I know the devil would have wanted to prevent me to bring this message but by God's grace, I'm bringing it. I'm still feeling a little pain, but I know that it will go nowhere. It will have to go and disappear. And I'm going to be well until the Lord is finished with me. William Aaron Brenham, the great Holy Spirit, the angel that was with William Brenham, which that angel, if you read the message, you who loves the message, that, he, that man had the features of William Aaron Brenham. I believe him to be the great Theophan of William Aaron Brenham. I believe him to be the great Jehovah manifested again in human flesh in my day. The things which I don't know, I commit to my father. But what I read in the message, I believe. That great angel had the same fingerprints with our prophet. It's for this cause that I believe with all my heart that that angel is William Aaron Brenham. That angel himself, the angel of the covenant, is William Aaron Brenham. Brother Joseph, why are you saying so? I'm saying so because I have followed the message and daily I read the message. And you can see, uh, I think you follow the, my, my videos. If you follow on YouTube, Joseph Mkono Channels, you will discover that daily I read the message. Daily I try to bring the quotes and it is in these quotes that I read and discover that that same great being had the same features with William Aaron Brenham. Had the same features with William Aaron Brenham. In so much that we, 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 the hand of that angel of God, which is Jehovah, was exactly the fingerprints of our prophet William Aaron Brenham. If there's anything which is beyond me there, that is not my, my, my part to phantom. Mine is just to believe that the great Holy Spirit that came in this day is William Brenham. Therefore, I believe that he is with us right now. I believe that the God that was in Jesus, 
is the angel of the covenant. That is the angel that has come to us. That's the angel that I'm believing that it's his William Aaron Brenham. I believe my healing comes from him. Blessed be the name of God. As I'm speaking right now, I believe that the pain in me, William Aaron Brenham, is going to take it away completely. Amen. Blessed be the name of God. This is, this is my faith. I'm not rushing to the hospital over a very serious matter in my body. For I have lived and believed this angel of God, believed this Branham all the days of my life, and I know that all will be well with me. All will be well with my soul, with my spirit, with my flesh, until the Lord is finished with me upon this earth. Okay, saints, let's go to the message now. Uh, I want us to read, um, I was just reading here, uh, St. John chapter 3. St. John chapter 3, verse mm, verse 27. Verse 27. And then after reading that scripture, we are going to come to the message taking sides with, Je with Jesus that was preached in 1962. Uh, St. John chapter 3, verse 27. Just be patient a little bit and follow what I'm trying to show here. I, I might look or I might uh, seem to be crazy or mad in your eyes. But if you love the message, just try to give it time and listen to what I'm trying to see. And if it's wrong, then you throw it away. But don't be quick to do it until first you finish the whole thing. The prophet used to say, when you are eating a cherry pie which you love and you come against a seed, you don't throw the whole, uh, the whole pie. You just throw the seed away and continue with the pie. If you love the Lord and if you love the message, this is what is taking place. Don't be offended by a little thing because that same thing which is offending you might be the thing that makes difference in your life. I know a brother, that's the, an Indian brother, that, that used to say uh, when you're eating chicken, most of you just throw, when you get to the bone, you throw them. But then that man said, but uh, sometimes it is in the, inside the bones where you get the bone marrow, which you need for your bones to become strong. Hallelujah. So, but because of uh, not being knowledgeable, people, they just throw away those bones. But it is inside the bones where you get the bone marrow, which is also needed by our bones to become strong in the word. The Lord really bless you. Okay. We... We go to, as I'm saying, St. John chapter 3, verse 27. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from God. 28. Ye yourself bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am come sent before him. 29. He that has the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, I must decrease. Now, this was John the Baptist responding to his disciples who had come to report to him that Master, he, the one you baptized here and he gave testimony that he was the Messiah, the same one has also started preaching and many people are going there and they are also baptizing. So somehow it's like there are some jealous the followers of, of John over what they started seeing happening with Jesus and his followers. You see, even today in the message, we are people who are still stuck with the first and the second pool and have not been able to move into the third pool. So what has, what has happened in the third pool? The opening of the word by the coming of the Lord himself the second time is really something that, has, that is really uh, not received well by the, by the other group. The other group still believes that we are waiting for the coming of the Lord, while the other group, by God's grace, have received and have their eyes opened to see that the second coming was fulfilled when Brother Brenham was still here on earth. Just like John here is saying, uh, he's saying, 
Uh, he that as the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the of the bridegroom's voice. And this my joy is fulfilled. John is saying his joy is fulfilled because he has heard the voice of the bridegroom. And we are saying we have heard and we have the voice today of the bridegroom. But then unfortunately we have also believers who are saying no, we are waiting for the voice. We have the shout, we are waiting for the voice. But we, we are saying we have received the shout, the voice and the trumpet which is the revelation of the thunders. Okay. Then John said, he must increase, but I must decrease. Then, then John declares, after he had introduced the Messiah, after he had told his disciples to say, this Jesus is the Messiah, go to him now, he's the one that I came, I, um, I, I, I was sent to forerun the first coming of this Christ. Now this is the man, my mission is over. So John says, I must decrease, he must, de he must increase. And then he says, he that cometh from above is above all. Is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly. And speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from above is above all. And then he also speaks this comparison of this is the heavenly angel. And this is the earthly angel. We all know that you have been following my little ministry that we always emphasize that in Revelation chapter 10, there's a heavenly messenger, a mighty messenger. Then there's an earthly messenger, which is on earth, the seventh angel. Here we have got John, and then John is giving testimony that this one is from above. Hallelujah. Now, in the days of John the Baptist, there was Jesus and John, and then there was the mighty messenger. I want you to be very clear here. Jesus was not the mighty messenger. Jesus was the son of God, the, the, the spiritual seed of Abraham in the flesh, son of God. And then the mighty messenger, which is the great pillar of fire, which is Jehovah, came down when Jesus was coming out of water and he came and entered into Jesus and it indwelled into Jesus. And from that time, Jesus became the anointed Messiah of the day. The message shifted from John unto Jesus. When the mighty messenger came upon, upon Jesus, when it came down, it, it came where there was Jesus and John, but it entered into Jesus, the mighty messenger, and the, John's message came to an end. Even though he continued on preaching, and there was people who continued following John, the same thing has happened in this day. There's people that has continued with the first and second pools, but they have not been able to see the coming of the third pool. They have not been able to see the coming of the Lord to take over to fulfill the promise which was given to Branham in 1933, that as John was sent with the first, um, with a message to forerun the first coming, you have been given a message which shall forerun the second coming. We have people up to this day, I know when I believed 25 years ago, people were saying it is the message which is forerunning the second coming of Christ. It was not Brother Brenham. Yes, there's passages like that, but the problem of it was in those days, the books were, we were, we were having access to the message in form of these small tablets, the books. The books, and sometimes maybe a believer could just have five books, some 20 books, some 100 books. Those who had books, maybe 200, they would think they are more superior than those who have five books. But by God's grace, somehow in the United States, the Holy Ghost anointed some brethren and they invented this tablet. And by the grace of God, Every believer today has got no excuse. You all have access to all 1,100 message sermons, which is the message of the hour. Hallelujah. And today, whether we have the books or not, we have everything on the tip of our finger. We have the whole information on the tip of our finger. We have them on our tablets. Wherever we are, if you love the message, you cannot say, oh, they are not giving us the books. Like, you know, they built churches by blocking the books from others to have access 
access to the books, but today it cannot be, it cannot happen. God, hallelujah, is like the ocean. You can't block it. You cannot block the ocean. You may block small rivers, streams, and things like that, and some large rivers, but you cannot block the ocean. God is the ocean, and the ocean itself is what has come in this day. No wonder each and every believer who wants the food is free to have his food right in his own house. Amen. We are no longer depending upon another man in this day. We appreciate the servants of God, but we are no longer dependent upon them. And in fact, even from the very beginning, we were not supposed to depend upon another man. We were supposed to depend upon the Lord God himself that has come again in human flesh called William Aaron Brenham in our day. Now, what I've just read here is in verse 8, St. John chapter 3, verse 8, it says, He must increase, but I must decrease. So, so, so Christ came, uh, the Messiah came when John the Baptist was still on earth giving his message. The Messiah came when John was still on earth giving his message. And the second coming of Christ comes when the seventh angel is still giving his message. The mighty messenger descends from heaven. That scripture, that's exactly with the message. Hmm. My God is great. I know people who are rich and are pastors and are bishops who denies this completely. Oh, God is great. How can, then how did they even come into the message? Whose messengers are they to go against the message itself directly? But God is good. Right now, the message is going forth and it will reach every predestinated seed. Christ came, the minister of Christ came, the Messiah came when John was giving his message. And we have the message here telling us in breach that while the seventh angel is sounding his trumpet, the same time the trumpet of God sounds, hallelujah, and the dead in Christ rises. The same time the mighty messenger of Revelation chapter 10 descends to the earth when the seventh angel is still here on earth. Why was it like that? Because always when the word comes, when God sends his word, it comes to a prophet. The word of the Lord comes to the prophet. Even though we were taught in the denominations that, oh, we shall be taken and meet him in the, in the air. Of course, we read that, but it needed a prophet to come and interpret this word this the bible needs god himself to interpret it to fulfill it god is his own in interpreter and god had to send the prophet and we had a promise that in the days of the voice of the seventh angel when he shall return when he shall come then all the mysteries shall be finished in his day we did not know that we needed someone to introduce us to the Messiah. But if you, if you have been following my messages, my messages, my videos on YouTube, you will discover that Eliezer actually is the one that took Rebecca to Isaac. And then Rebecca, she did not know Eliezer. And when she saw Eliezer, she asked, when she saw Isaac, Riding on the camel, the Holy Ghost message. Then she asked Eliezer, and then Eliezer is the one that explained to Rebecca, that was my master. Hallelujah! We did not know what this crowd is which is above me. They had speculations. Science had speculations. And it, was, it took the prophet William Brenham to declare to us in 1965 that that's our Lord up there. That is our Lord up there. And that thing, when Brother Brenham was declaring it in 1965, that thing had happened in 1963. So he was declaring what was already history, what was already in the past. In so much that today we are to show our brothers and sisters, our children, that that was the coming of the Lord. Not to try to point in the future, 
then you are in another message. You are not in the message of the hour. You are in a Pentecostal message, not the reviewed word. If you are in the reviewed word, you will point back your children, back to 1963, back to the crowd, and you declare to them, that is the Lord. Hallelujah. That is the fulfillment of the scripture. That was the fulfillment of Malachi 4. Declaring and declaring the Messiah, the return of the word back to the earth. The second time, the generation that was to see Jesus Christ return to the earth is the same generation which saw Israel being reinstated as a nation among nations in the United Nations. <sighs> Blessed be the name of God. Oh my, my, my. Satan is jealous of this, but he won't be able to stop it. He won't. It's too late, Satan. The Lord has already come and has revealed himself in bodily form of his church in the prophet called William Marion Brenham. We have received our Lord in William Marion Brenham. And we, and we, we have been declared the virtuous bride, the sinless bride. Hallelujah. And we have been told the battle is over. Amen. Blessed be the name of God. Hallelujah. We no longer mind about this earth, this flesh. Hallelujah. We also know that the devil will do nothing until we are done. Hallelujah. I know. I was in pain just 20 minutes ago. It's still residing, going down, down, down. And you know it's going to vanish because it won't do anything. And when the Lord is finished with me, then he is free to help me to get to the other side. Oh, blessed be the name of God. Blessed be the name of God. But the main point here is, we saw that it was Eliezer that introduced Rebekah to Isaac, and then also Eliezer introduced Isaac to Rebekah. So you cannot take away the prophet from the earth before the second coming. Because as John the Baptist was sent to foran the first coming of Christ, you are given a message that shall foran the second coming. And if that is the case, it means that Christ has to return when Brother Brenham is on earth, because it was him who was supposed to introduce introduce us to the bridegroom because we did not know the bridegroom we were just reading we were just reading in the books and what we learned in the denomination but nobody knew the bridegroom and it was brother Brenham that declared to us that that is our Lord up there that was the coming of the Lord that was the coming of the headstone that was the coming of the capstone that was the third pool Hallelujah! that was the seven thunders that was the marriage of the Lamb Becoming wed with his bride. Blessed be the name of the living God. Now, to those who truly believe the message, let's go to the court and see whether these things are not going to agree. We will go now in taking sides with Jesus in 1962, paragraph 58. Now, what I think down there, if that angel that said those words to me, said, as John the Baptist was sent to forerun the first coming of Christ. See, your message was to take this message and it would forerun the second coming of Christ. Well, if this has been it, then we are real, real close, brethren, because the hour... And the light of the message is just about gone out. Please, my brother, if you love the prophet, if you love the message, just follow me a little bit here. That's where the devil is twisting things here. They say, oh, it's the message which is for running. Look, the message and the messenger are one. Therefore, you cannot take away the prophet and still claim to say the message is for running, the coming of Christ. Yes, the prophet said it in that way. Yes, in many places the prophet says we say it in a roundabout way so that the wise and the prudent, they don't get it, but the elected, they pick it. So the prophet, look what the prophet has just declared here. <clears throat> it would forerun the second coming of Christ. Well, if this has been it, then we are real, real close Brethren, because the hour and the light of the message has just about gone out. Prabhupada says the hour, uh, the hour and the light of the message is just about gone out. In, in, he is trying to declare that the message has come to an end. Remember he was given a message in 1933. 
you shall forrun the second coming of Christ. And here he's telling us that the hour and the light as just of the message has just gone out. Did you notice when Pentecost fell and those brothers were filled at Pentecost with the Holy Ghost, it wasn't hardly any time until the message had begun to dim down and they begin to set up churches to hold the fort for Christ, expecting him to come. Brother Branham is trying to show in the taking size that uh, the steam of the message which started, uh, which caused all that worldwide revival, the steam is now about gone out. So now he's trying to show that if that message which I was given in 1933, that this message will forerun the second coming of Christ, uh, and then it could be that uh, that is it, which we have heard, because the message is about going out, is about gone out now. And then he goes to give an example of what happened in the early church, where he says it wasn't hardly any time until the message had begun to dim down and they begin to set up churches to hold the fort for Christ, expecting him to come. Well, that's the same thing taking place today. If the scripture is true, I will restore, says the Lord. I will restore, says the Lord. All that, blessed be the name of God. I will restore, say the Lord, all that the, the Pamawim, the Kankawim has eaten. Now, if that be it, if that is the message, and God forgive me, I don't know. If that's it, then the time is close at hand. Is close at hand, really, because the message is over. Do you hear that? This is the John of this day declaring in 1962 that the message is over. The forerunning is over. The forerunning, you who are trying to say the message is still forerunning. You don't love the prophet. If you love the prophet, you will not add to his message. And if you knew who this message was, you would not do it. But it's because you've got your own agenda. If you really recognize that this message is Christ himself, you cannot add or subtract to it. Now, you can make a mistake. I can make a mistake, but not deliberately go against the clear, plain message. Mistakes can be made. Just like Brother Brenham made a lot of mistakes, but they were not deliberate. Hence, the Lord was able to correct them. Even you and me, we can make mistakes. And if there's a seed of God in us, we will accept to be corrected. We accept to be corrected. Let's continue here. If that is the message, God forgive me, I don't know. If that is it, then the time is so close at hand Really, because the message is over. Brother Branham is trying to declare that the commission that was given in 1963, in 1933, has come to an end. His message is over. And then he gives the example of when the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost. They were on fire for, for a number of years. But a time came when the fire started going down. And what did they do? They had to start establishing set up churches and to start holding the fort to waiting for the coming. And the prophet is also declaring that as far as he understands, his message is now over. It's time to hold on for the coming of the Lord. And this had happened in 1962. To you who follow the message and you are following my videos, you understand my ministry. This is my ministry to declare that the second coming has already been fulfilled. We have been duped. You are still waiting for the second coming. It came in a way that nobody was expecting. Just like it happened in the first church, in the first coming. He came in a way that eluded all the Pharisees and the teachers of the Lord, the scribes. They missed his first coming. The same thing has repeated and twice had here at the end time than it was at the beginning. Paragraph 60. And the other night I was dreaming that I went to have discernment where a great host of my friends had gathered, thousands of them in a meeting. He had a dream where he was going to have discernment where a host of, a great of, a host of his friends were gathered in a meeting. There was a fellow come got me, and Billy usually comes gets me, 
because you don't talk to me. So when Billy goes to take the prophet uh, in, his, or in his room to bring him to the stage, he does not speak with the prophet. But this man in the dream who went to, to take the prophet, he, 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 he was speaking throughout. He was speaking throughout, contrary to what Billy usually does, the son of Brother, Brother Brabanam. And Billy usually comes, gets me, because you don't talk to me. And this man just talked a blue streak. And before I got over there, all the anointing was gone from me for it. So before the prophet could get to the stage, all the anointing, all the anointing had left the prophet because while this man was coming with the prophet, there was too much talking, talking, talking. And the anointing left the prophet. And like when Billy is bringing the prophet, there is no noise. He knows that the father has been under prayer and there's anointing upon him. And I should not say anything to disturb the anointing. So this man that went to take the prophet did all a blue streak of talking and the whole anointing was gone from the prophet. And this man just talked a blue streak. And before I got over there, all the anointing was gone from me for it. And then I said, well, I will just go over there and preach the message of telling those people, don't fool with those denominations and so forth and come out like this. And when I got to the platform, that had left me. So the prophet, as he was going there, the whole anointing left him. And then said, okay, uh, there's nothing that I'm going to do. I'm just going to go there and preach an ordinary message to, to, to tell the people, don't fool around with the denomination, things like that. Then he says, when he got to the platform, that thing also had left him. I want you to follow where this thing is coming from. To those who are following me on a, on a WhatsApp group, on my group, I've been giving that quotation in different forms from all the way from the 40s. When Brabana was repeating it to say, as John the Baptist was sent to forrun the second coming of Christ, so am I given a message which shall forrun the second coming. Now I had to bring all those quotes because, because as the prophet preaches, the revelation was progressive progressive and you'd add something here you'd miss something there then you have to take everything it's like you are reading the gospels you have to read all the four gospels to get a clear picture because when john uh when he, when matthews gave the message he had the anointing of a lion when luke gave the message he had the anointing of a man when Mark gave, he had the anointing of the ox. When, 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 when John gave, he had the anointing of the eagle. So now, John did not say certain things which uh, this one, Matthew, said. And this one also did not say... So, so information, uh, you, you, you have to take all the things together to get the entire information. So is it with this message. You just don't read one message and you stand on it. It's like the Bible. It has to... To, to, to be cohesive, it has to marry one another, it has to agree with each other from Genesis to Revelation. So even the message, you have to start with it from the time when Brother Brenham was born. Ask yourself your question, why is it three stars, they cross one another? Why is it three stars, they cross one another at the birth of William Aaron Brenham? Go back into the Bible and find out where that thing happened, and then it will give you a clue of what you are dealing with. In the Bible, only when Jesus was born, that's when, when the three stars crossed one another. Yes, something happened when Noah was born. Something happened when Moses was born. But, in the, but at the birth of Jesus, three planetary bodies, stars, they crossed one another. And that phenomena never happened again until the birth of William Aaron Brenham again. If you have something in you, it will tell you something. But if there's nothing in you, you will say, no, it just happened. You see, my brother, when we read this message, the same way we read this message is the same way we read the Bible. It's the same God, but made manifest and flesh in this day, like he was doing in the olden days in the Bible stories which we read there. 61. I don't know what it mean, what it meant, but just going on, I just don't know. It could be the end of my rod. Brabanam says it could mean the end of my rod. 
Now, John had the end of the road. And the, ro the end of the road for John was the introduction of the Messiah. Hallelujah. The first coming. And remember, Branham had also been given a commission. You shall run, you shall have a message which shall run the second coming of Christ. Which means that when his message is over, then there will be no more message except to introduce the Messiah. There he just gives you a dream. Where he had a dream. Where he was going to do discernment. Where thousands of his friends were. were. But the person that went to, to, to collect him. Did a lot of talking along the road. And like his son Billy. And all the anointing left the prophet. Why? The anointing of preparing the people. Was now finished. We were now going into another phase of the ministry. And which, what, which phase is it? The phase in which John pointed out, this is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. The one that I told you, that I have come baptizing here in Jordan, in water, but there's one coming who shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, and when he comes, I shall know him. He will have a sign that will be following you. There will be a pillar of fire. There will be a cloud pillar of fire. Hallelujah. That will be following the Messiah. Blessed be the name of the living God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The crowd pit of fire will be following the Messiah. Blessed be the name of God. Amen. Okay. We continue here. Our uh, electricity has just gone. And I don't know whether my, my re recording will not be affected. But so far it's going on. I don't know what it meant. But I just, but just going on, just don't know. It could be the end of my road. It could be the coming of the Lord. It could be the coming of the Lord. You see, the prophet says, it could be the coming of the Lord. Because why his, his message was to forerun the second coming of Christ. It could be the change of the day. It could be the change of the day. It could be the coming of that mighty one. It could be the coming of that mighty one. In Revelation chapter 10, it says, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven. If there is to be another besides what's already come, then the prophet says, If there's another besides what has already come, then it could be that. Because this one is over. It could be that. All those things we would do, we would have to draw from it would be. And as I stand here tonight before God and you brethren, I don't know. I couldn't tell. If I did, I would tell. I wouldn't mention. Bring anything up like this. If I didn't know which way. If I know which way the thing was going, I would say it. But I don't know. I can't tell. I am going right now on meetings without one speck of leading. I am going because I don't want to sit up there. I would like to get out in the woods as well. Uh, in the woods as well as anybody. If I am if I am wrong in this, God forgive me. If I am wrong on this, God forgive me. The prophet is telling us that his ministry has come to an end. The ministry of the seventh angel has come to an end. Just like the ministry of John came to an end. And when it came to an end, what did John do? He introduced the Messiah. The Messiah took over. And this is 1962 in the message taking sides with uh, Jesus. 62. There are three things could happen to me. It's either the end of my road and let this other one come on. So the prophet says, there are three things that could happen to me. It's either the end of my road and let this other one come on. You see? So his ministry was making a way for the other one. Just like the ministry of John was making a way for the other one. All things work together for good sense. I have opened up the road for him to take over. I have opened up the road for him to take over. It was John that made the rough road smooth for the Lord to take over. Because remember, 
the one that comes to preach, he will be on the way, restoring the faith of the children back to the fathers. Then he says, remember the one that comes will be on the way to restore the faith of the children back to the fathers. And you know the faith of the fathers is not Pentecostalism. The faith of the father was the son of man. They, they had received the Lord in human flesh. And they were worshipping directly the true word of God. The true word of God. Restoring the faith of the children back to the fathers. It would be the end of, it could be the end of my Lord. It could be that he is changing my ministry back into evangelism for overseas. Or it could be that he is not going to call me anymore for evangelist and he is taking me into the wilderness somewhere to anoint me, to send me forth like the promised one to come. I think it could be any of those things. So the prophet gives the three things, the three scenarios that he believed could do was going to take place. One of them was that maybe he was going now to 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 to, to go out of the way and let this other one now walk in the road that he had made. Just like John said, he's making the, the, the making a way, uh, paving a way for the Lord. Hallelujah. And we all know when the ministry started, it, uh, it, it actually, he uh, was told that you, you are to run, you, you are to have a message that shall forrun the second coming of Christ. That is way back in 1933. And now in 1962, we'd come to the junction. And this is what took place in the junction. The prophet says, as far as he knows, the message is over. His me is over. Now the prophet says, I'm blank. I don't know what is coming next. Now, you and me, we have to think and say, but then, if that's the case, then his mission is over. Just like John's mission was over. Now the question here is, if, he was, if, if now he was making a way for somebody, then we can expect the coming of the Lord to be fulfilled. Because that's what, what, that's what happened in the days of John. However, in the days of John, when the Holy Ghost, when the messenger from heaven came down, he came and indwelt Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But in our day, when the messenger came from heaven, he came and indwelled William Marion Branham. And he became the anointed Messiah of the age. The word that was promised to come was fulfilled in 1963 when Christ descended from heaven and came and unveiled his prophet and then came to his bride to receive his bride. This is how we have received the Lord at his second coming through the bodily flesh of William Brenham, a redeemed vessel. Hallelujah! Washed and cleansed by the blood of Christ, predestinated for ordained to be the body of the Lord, in which he was to manifest himself again as the Son of Man on earth. Blessed be the name of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of God. Please, don't just dismiss this, my brother. Look, my brother. Me, just like you, I also come from my denominations, which are graves. We were sleeping in the graves. If by God's grace, God had not put something in us, we would have continued in those graves. And we know that there was nothing there. They mock and laugh at us, but we know that the whole world has been opened to us. Not only has the Bible been opened to us, we now know who God is. God himself. We have heard the voice of God. We have heard the shout, the voice, and the trumpet. And we know what the thunders are. A thunder is the voice of God. It is thundered at the grave of Lazarus there. They said it has thundered. But then the Bible says, eh? Jesus, Jesus caught what was said. Hallelujah. It was God that spoke in that thunder. And only Jesus, being a prophet, was able to catch what the thunder uh, had said. So was it in 1963 when the seven thunders altered their voices. It had to take William Aaron Brenham, which was predestinated, the prophet of this day, to catch what the thunder has spoken, what the thunders had spoken. And also, you have to realize that Adam and Eve were one and the same person. Eve was the flesh and spirit of Adam. So is the true bride, the flesh and spirit of Adam. 
So, when the Lord comes in the bodily form of William Brenham, it should not stumble you and me. We don't look at the flesh. We look at the characteristics being displayed by that flesh. Because those characteristics, even though many impersonators have tried to raise and do the same, and many are dying to do the same thing, they do it in vain, because that is the sign of the Messiah. And the sign of the Messiah in every age, in every generation, it's only given to one man. And it comes by a promise. It just doesn't come anyhow. It comes by a promise of God. You see, Moses, when he came, it's not like he, he made up that story. It was to fulfill what, that which was spoken to Abram. That the Lord shall come himself and deliver the children of Israel with a mighty hand. But when God came down in the burning bush, he said, I'm sending you. I'm sending uh, Moses. Because God always operates through a prophet. And when Jesus, when God came down in Jesus, he was sent into the mountain. There in the mountain for 40 days and nights, the word was being written in him. The Bible says the spirit led him into the mountain. Jesus Christ, our Lord, was led of the spirit. Was the red, he was led by the same spirit which led Moses into Egypt. He was led by the same spirit which led Brother Brenham from 1933 to the time that we are talking about here in 1962. So, you and me, as we recall, it says, as John the Baptist was sent to forrun the first coming of Christ, you are given a message which shall forrun the second coming of Christ. And then by this time now we know, because we are privileged, we have got all the messages, and we pray and the Holy Spirit helps us. We understand, we do understand that the message and the messenger, they are one. So you cannot separate Brabanam from this message. Therefore, in 1960, in, 19, in 1962, the message of forrunning came to an end. This is why in, 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 at, the end of, uh, at the end of that year, in the message, says, is this the time? Says, is this the time? Brother Brenham preached the message, says, is this the time? That this one which we are talking about is in, in June. And if you read all the messages actually from 1960 to 1962, especially 61 and 62, they will show you, Brabana was saying something is about to happen, something is fixing to happen. But then the, 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 the revelation was also progressive with our brother. Hallelujah. Remember, Brother Brenham and us, we are one. We are all gentle, bride. But there had to be a body which is sanctified by God for God to come in and speak to us. And that is William Aaron Brenham. William Brenham, of those three messengers that came to, 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 to the three messengers that came to, to Abram, Brenham represents the main one, the main speaker, the one that was in the middle. Hallelujah! Blessed be the name of God. And Abraham recognized the third man, that one in the middle, as God. And I, your brother Mukonyo, I recognize William Brenham as God. Oh, brother, you're trying to exalt a man. I'm not exalting a man. I'm telling you that that man was more than a, a, a man. He was more than a prophet. He was God in human flesh. True. The flesh and blood was born of Charles and Era. But he was a, 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 a what? He was a predestinated vessel which was sanctified from birth, in which the Lord came in and manifested in human flesh again back to the earth. Oh God. Oh God, I don't know how to, I don't know what to do. But I know somehow the message is getting over. It may be brushed aside by many like always, but the predestinated seed is receiving it right now. I'm telling you that when the Lord came this time, the second time, he unveiled William Aaron Brenham and he fulfilled the second coming of the Son of Man. There is no ministry of the Son of Man coming in the future. And the Son of Man has already come in the clouds of the air. That's why we have the cloud above me there. 
please don't don't continue to hang on to traditions, Pentecostal teachings and denominational teachings. Oh, we shall meet him in the crowd. There we already have a crowd, my brother. And I'm saying you, right now you have to meet him. We have to receive him. He has come in the bodily form. God, William, Marion, Brenham. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of God. Blessed be the name of God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of God. Amen. Therefore, the minister of William Maron Brenham as the seventh angel had to decrease. And when the angel of the Lord came, that messenger from heaven came, which is none other than our Lord the Christ, the word in word form. He came and unveiled William Maron Brenham and the Lord had to increase. It is for this reason. For this reason. They say, oh, your God died with Brother Brenham. No! Our God is here. Hallelujah! William Brenham and the word became one and the Lord is here with us. The prophet is here with us. This is the anointing which is upon me right now and upon everyone that believes. <sighs> As I'm speaking, the devil is so ashamed of, me, of himself because he did not want these things to be declared. He, he, had just, he just attacked me an hour ago. I don't know if it's an hour or 30 minutes ago. I humbled myself. And my wife laid hands upon me, and I'm beginning to feel right now. And I know that Satan will do nothing until my mission is over on earth. The devil will not be able to do anything upon me until the Lord's mission is over with me. Sirs, is this the time? Yes, it was the time for the coming of the Lord. It was the time for the message to introduce Messiah again on earth. This message shall introduce the Messiah again to the world. You have got those steps if you're a believer. Yes, people in the denomination would understand. They've got no way of ever understanding this. But you hypocrites who still hang around the message, you read but you don't want to believe. You want it to happen in your own way. No, the Lord has kept his promise and he has fulfilled his word according to the way that he ordained himself, which is written in the word of God. Remember, at the first coming of Christ, at the first coming of Christ, the Bible says when John was to come, trees, the leaves of the trees would be jumping up and down and clapping. Mountains would be doing this and this and this. All those things were written in a simple way. Hallelujah. It was describing the ministry of John. There was no such thing which happened, but those things, they happened in the spiritual and all these things you are saying is supposed to be this and this. All those things is what is taking place and has already taken place and continues to take place right now. But they are happening in the spiritual way. Remember, the rapture is only for the supernatural bride. Not the carnal intellectual bride. The supernatural bride of Christ. She understands how she is now married. She understands how she has been raptured and caught up into the crowd above there. Ask yourself a question. Are you, still, are you saying that crowd is just hanging there? Read the messages from 1963 going to 65. You will understand even the prophet, the revelation continued to open until in 1963-65 he declared that was the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh my, 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 my. And then he told us in, nine, in the message, the spoken word is the original seed, that I'm going to tell you some personal things. My mission to the earth is to forerun the second coming of Christ. It's the second coming of the word, and that word will be Christ. The second coming of the word, and that word would be Christ. Just there, or if you follow all the quotes that talks about uh, your message shall forerun the second coming. If you follow all those quotes by the help of the table, you are going to see that the language begins to change or begins to give a different meaning from what we have had, which we knew from the denominations. In the denominations, we had the picture of Jesus, the man with beds to come. But when you continue prayer free with all your soul seeking the Lord, you will discover that Branham was not for running the second coming of the flesh man Jesus. He was for running the second coming of Christ the word coming into his body, which is the bride. 
And if he was going to come physically in the bride, it means there has to be a sanctified vessel. And Brother Brenham was protected from his birth by God, not to defile his body, because that body was predestined to be the body of the Son of Man. Brother Brenham's body was predestined to be body of the Son. He was the Son of Man, but his body was the body of the Son of Man, of Christ. And Christ was coming in, appearing before 1963, appearing, fulfilling all the scriptures which were spoken by, uh, for the church, for the Pentecostal age. But finally, in 1963, the whole word came and was completed, and the word was made flesh in our prophet Jesus Christ, became, came physically now, and he, he opened the seals. Hallelujah. Those seals which we read were opened by the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ himself, in a bodily form called William Marion Brenham. We have received Jesus Christ again in, with a name called William Marion Brenham. That was the Lord Jesus Christ in this age. God is so good. He has declared this thing through somebody who is not even known. So that even if you don't believe it, on the day of judgment, you have nowhere to hide, my brother. On the day of judgment, you shall recognize that it had nothing to do with your pastors which you have chosen yourself. It had to do with the word that was brought by the prophet. This message must supposed to be received individually. Not with our church in Newcastle, our church in this town. No, 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 no church, no what. But the word, Christ himself, revealing himself through the message, through the prophet, in this day is the message of the hour. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. Oh, I always refer to Joseph Branham and Billy. I know they've been dismissed by the fivefold ministry. Oh, it's so surprising. Billy was with his father throughout the ministry. And after that, then today you dismiss him. And you claim to know more of the, the message, more than uh, what they're doing. They might not know these mysteries, but they insisted for people to listen to the tapes so that there's no misinterpretation. And the fivefold ministry of this day... <coughs> They are doing their best to take away people from the message books because they realize that if you begin to read and to listen to the prophet and you catch the revelation, you, you know that you've misplaced your honor. You have misplaced your honor. For years, people have misplaced their honor of the Lord upon man-made appointed people. They are on a spree of enriching themselves. They are on a spree of making little kingdoms. They are on a spree because they looked and they saw other, uh, other nations and they said, we also want to have leaders to fight for us. Every church has got its leader. Instead of having one leader, the angel of God that has come in this day, Christ, the Son of God, made manifest, made flesh again in the person of William Baron Brenham. The Holy Ghost, the cloud pillar of fire, that messenger is still here with us, the healing angel. The Lamb of God, the Savior, the Creator of the heavens and earth, He is still with us today. <sighs> Blessed be the name of God. Taking sides with Christ. Take sides with Christ. Brother Brenham fulfilled his commission of 1933 fully in 1962. And in 1963, he declared, There is the Lamb of God. That takes away the sins of the world. Just like John pointed out, there is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the, or the, sins of the world. Brother Brenham did the same thing in our day. He said, not your Pentecostal, not your Methodist, not your pastor, and so on, so, so, but the Lamb, the Word in human flesh, manifesting the Word of promise for this day. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of God. Remember 2,000 years ago, he came to pay for the penalty of sin. And in this last 20th century, he brought redemption, the book of redemption, the bride's book. Hallelujah. It's not a teaching like they are trying to make it. It's a reality, recognizing that you are part of the body, which is already on the other side. Oh, God bless your saints. I commit these things into the hands of the Lord. The Lord that has come again and manifested himself in human flesh, called William Aaron Brenham, to the elected of this day. The Lord bless you so much.